This law are some of the crimes through eyes protected by law in our state. Choice and freedom. Clients have the right to take an active role in making or changing their care plan. Refuse care, medication, or treatment. Choose the activities, schedules, including meal times and when care is given. Health care, clothing, and hairstyle. Join in social, religious, and community serve activities. Manage his or her finances. Be free from chemical or physical restraints. Express a complaint or concern without fear of retaliation and be with people both inside and outside of their residence, including family, friends, his or her doctor, and an ombudsman, if in an adult family home or assisted living facility. Confidentiality and privacy. Clients have the right to privacy. When performing personal care, screen or cover a client and make sure doors and window curtains are closed. Have all medical, financial, and personal matters kept private. Only share medical, financial, or other personal information about a client with appropriate care team members and have privacy in his or her own personal space and during personal care. Give the client privacy for phone calls and visits. Let the client open mail in private. Respect privacy. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA. HIPAA is a federal law that adds additional requirements for the use and disclosure of health information. A legal goal of HIPAA is to make sure that a person's health information is properly protected while still allowing the flow of health information needed to provide high quality health care. Your employer will review, reveal what you need to know to follow the HIPAA regulation as it applies to your job. <laughs> your role in protecting the client's rights. Knowing that the client has rights and what they are is only one step. Protecting this right each time you are working with a client is part of your daily responsibility. Protecting clients' rights means you do the following things every time you interact with the client. Treat clients with respect, support a client's choices and independence, protect a client's privacy and confidential information, and keep clients safe. As we start your new job, it may seem easy to commit to always protecting a client's rights. There will be days when it will be more difficult to do. You may be tired, understaffed, behind in your schedule, or frustrated by a client's choice. We start from the beginning of your job to always ask about and honor a client's choices. This will help make it second nature during the more difficult days. Ask about and honor a client's choices. Care settings. There are different care settings that hire long-term care workers. In-home care, most adults who 
need care, get services and support to, to remain at home. One of the services can be hiring a long-term care worker to help with care. Additional services and supports that may be offered depending on the client's care needs include nursing or other professional health care, community resources such as meals on wheels, hospice or respite care, or home modifications and assistive devices to help with independence. Long-term care workers working in a client's home are either hired directly by the person needing the care <laughs> or through a home care agency. Residential care, residential care is another option for a client who needs help with care. Adult family homes and assisted living facilities are two examples of residential care. Both adult family homes and assisted living facilities provide a room, meals, laundry, supervision, and help with care. In addition, some adult family homes and assisted living facilities provide occasional nursing care and or specialized, specialized care for people with mental health issues, developmental disabilities, or dementia. Adult family homes are regular neighborhood homes that can provide care from anywhere between two to six clients. Adult living facilities are large home facilities in the community that have seven or more clients. Adult family home and assisted living facilities are licensed by the state. Regulations set by the state help ensure consistent quality care and services for all clients living in adult family home and assisted living facilities. Each home facility or agency has its own unique business philosophy and goals. Understanding your employer's vision helps you get a better feel for your job and what it would be expected of you. So, what are our basic job responsibilities as a long-term care worker? So, here are some of the basic job responsibilities you will have as a long-term care worker. Understand a client's care needs and perform your assigned task correctly and efficiently as documented in the client's care plan or negotiated service agreement. Know how and when a client prefers to have this task completed. Respect and follow the client's choices. For the health and safety of a client, all of the tasks assigned to you. Observe the client for changes in health and well-being. Document and report any changes you are seeing uh, using the policies and procedures outlined in this orientation. Respond to emergencies appropriately. Come to work on time. Call your super supervisor if you can't make a shift. And dress appropriately. If you do not understand what it means to dress appropriately, ask your supervisor. Complete and keep accurate time sheets and give two weeks written notice if you will be keeping your job. Job performance. How well you do your job impacts a client's life every day. Do your job well and clients continue to live with dignity and independence. Do your job poorly and you risk causing physical harm, distress, anxiety, and or embarrassment to the clients you are being paid 
to provide care and support. Do your best. Take pride in your work. When you are at work, focus on your job. Learn how to do your assigned task correctly and efficiently. Know what to do and what to avoid. Be honest, clear, and professional in your dealings with clients and other care team members. In addition, your employer has other expectations of you as a worker. Start your job with a solid understanding of what is expected of you. Understanding your job duties. You need to understand how and when to do each of your assigned tasks. You will get this information from the client's care plan, other care team members, and most importantly, the client. <laughs> What is the care plan? Each client has a written care plan. A care plan is a document developed after a thorough assessment, evaluation was completed for the client. The assessment results in a clear understanding <laughs> of what services and support the client needs and how and when he or she would like these services completed. These tasks and client preferences are documented in the care plan. A written care plan helps make sure the client receives consistent quality care that meets his or her needs. A client's care plan changes as his or her care needs change. In an assisted living facility or adult family home, the care plan you will see is called the Negotiated Service Agreement or Plan. What part of the client's care plan you will see depends on where you work. Some long-term care workers will have access and read the entire care plan. Others will get a task list. If you are allowed, read through the care plan for each of the clients you are assigned to. You are always responsible for following the client's care plan. Talk about the care plan or task list. Be patient. If a client finds talking about these issues difficult, a client may not be used to talking about such personal matters. A client may find it hard to admit that he or she needs help and it may be hard to explain a routine he or she had for years. Respect and understand a client's choices of how and when care services are to be provided. The information in the care plan is confidential and sensitive. Respect the client's need and right to have everything you read or hear kept private. Your professional listen goes a long way in reducing a client's uneasiness or embarrassment having such personal information available to others. Getting the information you need. Respect a client's preferences by making sure you get the information you need to honor them. You and the client need to know what you are doing. Understand the limit of your work. Feel like part of the same team and avoid misunderstandings later by discussing the care task carefully when you first begin. Even with information from the care plan and other care team members, you still need to talk directly with the client 
and ask them about his or her preferences. Asking good questions is an art. The way you ask questions of a client gets you more of the information you need. Ask questions specific to the task. For example, do you prepare a bath or shower this morning? Ask questions that are open-ended rather than questions that, that can be answered by yes or no. For example, asking what would you like for breakfast will get you better information than asking do you want breakfast now? Ask questions that start with what, when, where, why, and how. For example, the care plan says that you are to help with bathing. Ask questions like, how hot do you like your bath water? What type of soap works well for you? Asking good questions helps you get the information you need to do your job correctly. Establish a routine. When you begin with a new assignment, agree with a client on a routine and then stick with it. A routine or schedule helps you finish all your tasks. A routine means you and the client will know what to expect each shift. Routines help you and a client. Ask again. After working for a client for a while, it is good practice to talk with him or her again about tasks in the care plan. Is there anything he or she would like to be done differently? By asking again, you can make sure you understand a client's routine and keep doing the task the way that works best for him or her. Learn more about a client's preferences and get feedback on how you are doing. Ask again on how you have done your job well. Good communication. Good communication means more than talking to a client. Communicating will help you provide quality care and makes your job easier. Good communication means watching the client's body language carefully to see what his or her action and gesture may be telling you and listening carefully to any comments from the client. Good communication helps get you the information you need to do your job. Things go smoothly with the client and other care team members. Keep things calmer in stressful situations and other view you as a professional. First impression. You only have a few seconds to make a good first impression on clients and the client's family members, friends, or guardians. First impressions are based on your appearance, body language, behavior, and clothing. When meeting a client on his or her family, friends, or guardian for the first time, Review the client's care plan before you meet, if possible. Does the client have any communication challenges, such as difficulty hearing or speaking? Plan ahead on how best to work with any challenges. Introduce yourself and explain why you are there. Ask the client what name he or she would prefer to use and pay attention to the following elements. Stop what you are doing and give the other person your full attention. A warm and genuine smile makes you and the other person more comfortable and at ease. Stand tall, 
Make eye contact. Turn your body towards the person and greet with a firm handshake if appropriate for the other person's culture. Introduce yourself and what you do. For example, good morning. My name is Elon and I'm one of your father's caregivers. Use the person's name several times in the conversation. This will show you paid attention from the start. Remember, you never get a second chance to make a good impression. First impression is lasting. Listen. Another part of good communication is to listen. Good listening takes effort. Give a client 100% of your attention. Don't try to listen while doing something else and face a client and lean forward slightly. This gives good eye contact and shows interest. Good listening means focus on a client while listening because it helps build trust with a client. Encourage honest sharing of thoughts and feelings and make sure you accurately hear what the other person says. Good listening also gives a client time to find the right word. Encourage the client to continue by saying, I see. Tell me more. Uh-huh. Or by nodding your head. Ask questions and get more information when you are unclear. Do not jump in with your ideas or advice. Wait until you're asked and be willing to listen to things a client needs to say. Don't avoid a subject because you're not comfortable with it. And sometimes, silence allows time for listening and brings people together. If a client is sad or worried, just listening helps. Silence gives a person time to think and to choose words. Silence gives the person time to control anger or other strong emotions. Give them time to think and feel. Body language. Your actions, how you hold your body, and your facial expression are all nonverbal communication or what we call body language. So be aware of what your body language is telling a client. A cheerful expression and pleasant tone of voice show a positive attitude. Standing still <clears throat> and making direct eye contact shows you are paying attention. Good posture with arms relaxed shows you are approachable and confident. And always make sure your body language matches what you are saying with your words. Nonverbal communication is powerful. A client's body language. A client's body language will take me tell you more about he, how he or she feels, than what he or she says. Watch for nonverbal signs that help you better understand what is happening with a client. For example, here are some nonverbal signs of a client being in pain. A tight or tense body, rocking back and forth, constantly touching a place on his body that is in pain, a facial grimace or trouble eyes. By being observant of these nonverbal signs of pain, you can talk to a client about things you can do to make him or her more comfortable. Be more careful when performing personal care tasks and stay alert to the possibility of a growing problem. 
Watch for words and body language that do not match. In most cases, the body will tell you what is really happening. For example, if the client says, I'm fine, but her body language tells you she's in pain, the chances are she's not fine, but is unable or uncomfortable talking about what she's feeling. Business communication. There are times when you need to talk with your supervisor or other managers when you have concern, question, problems with a co-worker or your schedule, etc. It is your responsibility to act professionally and resolve issues before things get out of hand. Don't delay or hide problems. Give your supervisor time to help or plan for what is needed. Be positive. A positive attitude helps everyone who works with you, including your boss, communicate with questions or suggestions rather than complaints. Ask for what you need. It's easy to complain without taking action. Describe the situation or request objectively and clearly ask for what you want and stay calm. If something has you angry or upset until you have some control over your emotions before approaching your boss. Be professional when talking with your supervisor. Talking on the phone at work. Answering the phone at work requires good business phone etiquette. Take a deep breath and focus on the phone. Have pen and paper handy. Smile as you pick up the phone. Smiling when you talk comes across in your voice. Use a tone that is helpful, natural, and respectful. Say the name of the facility and your full name. Ask, how may I help you? And if you're answering the phone for a client, identify yourself and for whom you are answering the phone. For example, say hello. This is Eli. I'm answering the phone for Susan Smith. May I help you? Emergency communication. It is your responsibility to know to who and how you are to communicate with others in the building, home, during an emergency, and where the policies and procedures are documented. See the safety training for more information on disaster planning. Communicating with care team members. Long-term care workers often spend more time with a client than other care team members. You are a valuable source of information regarding a client's day-to-day -day health and well-being. Communicating with other care team members is an essential part of your job. Documentation and reporting. You are providing care to people whose health and well-being used to be monitored closely. You have a responsibility to observe clients and communicate any changes or concerns efficiently and quickly to all necessary care team members. Okay. This is especially important okay. when people work on different shifts or in different departments. Observe. Oh. As long-term care workers, you may be the first person to notice the change in the client's physical, mental, or emotional condition. It is your responsibility to watch for these changes. Use your senses of touch, sight, smell, and hearing to observe as you care for a client. 
Watch for changes in mood. Listen when a client tells you about feelings or pain. Change in grooming. Dirty clothing, dirty hair, body odor. Change in mood, usually quiet or feel anxious, fearful, showing extreme grief or paranoia, saying that someone is out there to get them or is taking their money or is talking of suicide. Confusion, forgetfulness, lack of cooperation, giving answers to questions that don't make sense. Any change in ability to walk, stand, or do daily self-care. Physical changes that may mean illness such as swelling, skin rashes, cough, difficulty breathing, change in eating or cooking habits, loss of weight, loss of interest in food and eating, any sign of not having enough to eat, and talk of financial problems or asking for help with a problem. Look for signs of change as you give care. Documenting covers all the facts when documenting and reporting. When, day and time you observe the change, behavior or incident. What happened? Write down the objective facts. Where you observe this happening. How long and often it happened. Who was present, involved, or notified about what is happening and what action you took and the outcome. Remember, client's record contains very personal and confidential information. State and federal laws outline strict guidelines for how a client's records, especially medical records, must be handled. Your facility or company will have written policies and procedures to ensure you maintain the highest integrity when handling or adding to a client's records. This includes how, when, and what you do when information needs to be in writing. Understand and follow the documentation policies and procedures where you work. General documentation tips. These are tips for keeping a client's record confidential. Always protect a client's right to privacy. Never leave notes or forms in places where others can see them. In short, do not have your client's record lying out unattended. Refile any client's records immediately in their proper location once you are done with them. Be aware of who is in the area when reviewing or updating a client's record and do not discuss what you learn from the client's record with anyone outside of the care team. Point clearly so others aren't struggling to write your writing, okay? Use black ink when documenting. Describe what you observe clearly so that someone who was not there will easily understand. Describe only what you see. These are called observable facts. Leave out your personal opinions and interpretation of what you think happened. Remember that what you write becomes a legal document. So never make an entry into a client's record for someone else or sign an entry for something that you did not do or see done. Look for signs of change as you give care. Reporting. 
the home or facility where you work will have clear rules about when to report your concern to other care team members. These are often situations when a more immediate action is needed or the client must be more closely monitored. It is your responsibility to make sure you follow these rules and have a thorough understanding of when you are required to report and to whom. If a client refuses care, any client always has the, has the right to refuse care. Sometimes a client may not want you to do one or all of your assigned tasks. Take the time to figure out why and if there is anything you can do to help. It may be that the client does not feel up to it that day, but will be the next time you are there. Do you need to document or report the client's refusal to get care? It often depends on the task that you can get done and if this, there are safety concerns for the client. If you are not sure, ask your supervisor. Know what does and does not need to be documented or reported and when. Your role as a mandated reporter. Unfortunately, there may be times when what you observe or suspect leads you to believe a vulnerable adult is being harmed. Who is considered a vulnerable adult? Over the age of 60, unable to care for him or herself, living in a nursing home, assisted living facility, or adult family home, receiving services from home health, hospice, home care agency, or an individual provider with a developmental disability and with a legal guardian. We all share a moral responsibility to help protect others who are less likely to be able to protect themselves and at risk of getting harmed physically, mentally, and or emotionally. By Washington state law, your responsibility as a long-term care worker goes beyond a moral obligation. It is also the law. You are a mandated reporter if you suspect, meaning you have reasonable cause to believe any vulnerable adult is being abused, abandoned, neglected, or exploited. This is true whether you are on or off your job. Washington State law also requires all mandatory reporters to report suspected child abuse and neglect. To make sure these state and federal laws are followed, the facility or company where you work has written rules and policies to protect its client from harm. These rules and policies are covered here and again during your basic training. Understand your role as mandated reporter. Some helpful definitions. Abandonment is when someone responsible for care of a vulnerable adult leaves the person without the means or ability to get necessary food, clothing, shelter, or health care. Abuse is willfully inflicting injury, unreasonable confinement, intimidation, or punishment on a vulnerable adult. Abuse includes sexual abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, and exploitation of a vulnerable adult. Sexual abuse means any form of non-consensual sexual conduct, 
including but not limited to unwanted or inappropriate touching, rape, sodomy, sexual coercion, sexually explicit photography, and sexual harassment. Sexual abuse also includes 